Uh... Always a hot spot for alternative culture, San Francisco gave way to the punk explosion of the late 70s. With bands like the Dead Kennedys and NBC leading the way, the foundation for a real punk community Set. Inspired by what they had seen before them and encouraged by the upstart Maximum Rock and Roll magazine, a new wave of DIY punks had created their own scene. One of the most active members of this new movement was David Hayes. Whether it was being on the radio or putting out records, David was part of one of the most exciting times in punk's history. When you moved to California, when? 1967. Do you remember the first punk band you saw? A uh, serious punk band, I think, probably was the Effigies from Chicago because they opened for uh, the Toy Dolls at the Mabu. That's a Mabu Hay in San Francisco. A long time ago, I, I got to stay in a room with Tim Yohannan. Like, I never really, really met him, but I got to stay in the same room with him. I was probably 22 years old, and it was pretty exciting. Do you remember the first time you met him? First time? I'm not sure. I moved out of my parents' house into a house with... Uh, Dave MDC and Lawrence Livermore and a guy named Joe and it was probably a couple days after that that I met Tim. you have any impressions from your first meeting of him? I think maybe I was confused by the fact that he was such a small person but I have absolutely nothing but respect for him in hindsight. There was nothing negative I could come up with to say about him. I've never been around someone that was so convinced of what they were doing was right. And he has a political magazine filled with uh, rhetoric about animal rights and not rhetoric, but in a positive way. And then he would order pork chops. <laughs> I've never seen anybody else order pork chops to go. He used to have a show on MR radio when he used to. Yeah, but just every once in a while, whenever it came up. Absolutely everything that was maximum rock and roll related, I was in on it on day one. Right. It was weird, for sure, because it was the same. It seems like a click, because it is. It's it's a clubhouse where a bunch of people are, are so used to being there that they behave in a, in a way that seems like it's elitist, but it's not. Is there a band that you think is entirely underappreciated from like the late 80s, like East Bay scene? Number one is Soup. That's who they never recorded. Fuck you. They never released. No. I didn't you know, know that Jesse... They play... I'm talking to you. <laughs> they were the first band ever to play at Gilman Street. They were the opening band on night number one. I did see someone somewhat recently that was a younger person and they had the soup tattoo. I, I laughed. This one right here. Drawn by Richie Booker, who did the cover for Very Small World and Dookie by Green Day. And was later in Sweet Baby Jesus. Before we did the Green Day 7 inch, um, Lawrence said, Hey, I saw this band, they're really good. And we had to agree that we liked the band. I went and saw them live, and I was like, fuck yeah, dude, we're going to put out their record. And to this day, I don't think uh, Mike and Billy Joe have ever done anything to make me think less of them. They're absolutely talented, and they can harmonize like motherfuckers, even when they weren't even old enough to drink. First record you ever put out? The first record was Turn It Around. Right. On MRR that I... That Tim I like kind of to paid say I was it. the babysitter. Right. No, he didn't kind of pay for it. He paid for it. Tim paid for it. <laughs> you kind of put it together. Got all yeah. the bands together and whatnot. I did the layout, the graphics. Right. The, uh, we all, it was a collective opinion as far as what bands would be on it and which songs, which at some point someone asked, how much time can you fit on a seven inch? I'm like, oh, eight minutes. So the turn it around double seven inch sounds horrible because there's way too much time mm -hmm. on each side. And then from there you struck out on your own. Corrupt Immorals was the first one I wanted to put out by myself. Oh man, I have to talk about the hippie now. I don't even like to say his name. <laughs> it's up to you, man. 
call him lightsaber. You can frame, you can frame it however you want to. Um, this guy, he also did a radio show through MRR, and he was from Laytonville, California, uh, up where they grow pot for a living. Is that in Humboldt? Humboldt County, yes. <laughs> I'm going to start crying if I have to talk about this shit. Okay. Uh, Lawrence. Oh, I said his name. Damn it. Damn the hippie. We agreed to do with uh, his money, which was all from pot that he grew himself. Man. Sponsored. The truth is sponsored <laughs> by Budweiser <laughs> tonight. <laughs> so, yeah. Lookout Records was started because of uh, homegrown marijuana money. All the bands that we started with were already on the Turn It Around record. And that was Corrupt Immorals, uh, Isocracy, Operation Ivy, and Crimshrine. And I actually honestly think Crimshrine was an afterthought. So, first record, Turn Around. Turn first, around. first Lookout record is. Corrupt Immorals, man. Yeah, man. It's like a chat. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. We didn't make money right away, but. We sold enough to make it worthwhile. Right. Or to keep putting, just putting the money back into putting out other bands. What was the first band you ever went on tour with? First band I ever went on tour with was a little band called Operation Ivy. What was that, 89 or? 88. 88. I think. Full U.S. tour. Yeah. We toured in a car. <laughs> Matt, it was a 1969 Chrysler Newport. And Matt built a specific box on the roof that fit Dave's drums exactly. What was the last lookout record you did? The Plaid Red Man album. What was your decision to walk away? It was just... Well, I almost quit in about a year into it. Uh, I don't remember why. I did this cartoon character not a cartoon character, I did this little drawing of some sort of creature and his name was Floyd, for whatever reason. And I was gonna put out my own record called Floyd. I didn't quit Lookout, and that became the thing that ate Floyd, and I put all those bands together. And then later, yeah. Fat put out a record called The Thing That Floyd Ate. <laughs> so that was a compliment. Um, what was the question? So then you started very small. What was the what was the first very small release? Soup? Help me out here. I thought it was corrupt <laughs> morals again. Yeah. That's why I got this guy. <laughs> corrupt morals, it was old demos by them. Yeah. Uh think about it. Yeah. That's number one. What what is it that makes you want to put out a band's music? So people can hear it. What what usually inspires you? Is it just the people you know, or it has absolutely nothing to do with style, or or uh, style of music. It's all about it. Either it's good or it's not. You can't want the world to change and be narrow-minded about music. Because if you're narrow-minded, I can't talk anymore. If you're narrow-minded about anything, you can't change the world. Mm -hmm. 